Well, good afternoon and welcome to the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences Spotlights. Uh, my name is Trevor. Uh, happy Friday to you and Carlton, you Spirit Day. That's why I got my Spirit Day uniform on here, as you can see. Uh, once again, I'm Trevor Lewis, National Recruitment Advisor, and I'm uh, joined by a great group of professors and students today who are going to explore uh, student life in the arts and social sciences. And um, the specialties we'll be spotlighting today are indeed very popular choices with applicants in childhood and youth studies, human rights and women's and gender studies. So thank you for joining us today and perhaps each Friday at 4 p.m. as we delve into new topics each and every week. The schedule and link will be posted uh, here, uh, so feel free to, to check that out. In addition, uh, let me take a quick moment to highlight some other important, important activities such as our open house event, which is coming up for the Faculty on Arts and Social Sciences on Saturday, November 7th. Check out that schedule and please do circle back to join us once again on Saturday, November 7th for our virtual open house. And hot off the presses is the launch of guided virtual tours, which will commence Monday, October, uh, Monday in, Mondays in October, and, be, and we offered Monday to Sunday, 2 p.m. and 5 p.m., as well as Saturdays and Sundays at 10 a.m. So check out registration for those on Carlton 360. For today's housekeeping, um, feel free to check out the live Q&A function here in, the, in this live event, as we have a whole host of recruitment and admissions experts behind the curtain here answering your questions and helping you pave your way to a successful academic career in the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences. Okay, so before I begin, uh, let me start by saying, Carleton University acknowledges the location of its campus on the traditional unceded territories of the Algonquin Nation. That being said, let's bring in our first speaker. First speaker is Julia, a professor in the Childhood and Youth Studies program. I'd like to welcome Julia on screen and to say hello. And then uh, Julia will in turn bring in a student from the program uh, to have a, a chat just for, for you and I and everyone here on the event. So welcome, Julia. Thanks. Yeah, I'm really happy to be here. Um, and I am, um, I, you know, I think the Childhood and Youth Studies program at Carleton has so much to offer. Um, and I'm excited to talk with Vanessa about her experience in the program. Hey, Vanessa, how's it going? Good, you? Good, good. Um, so tell me about how you chose Carleton. How I, sorry, how I came to Carleton? Yeah, well, how you chose Carleton and, and maybe specifically the Childhood and Youth Studies program. Uh, yeah, so I, for Carleton specifically, I, I always really loved the campus. I, I wanted to move somewhere that wasn't too far away from home. It was about an hour, maybe an hour and a half's drive. Um, and I really liked the like enclosed campus rather than just like some busy streets. I was from a pretty small town and I really wasn't uh, ready for that kind of a huge transition. <laughs> um, but what really brought me to the program itself was I, I just I had always wanted to work with children. I just I knew that that was exactly where I wanted to go, but I I didn't really think that I wanted to necessarily go the teaching route and and kind of put myself in that box. And so I wanted to do something where I knew I could work with children, but I didn't necessarily have to become a teacher. I wanted to keep keep my options open a little bit there. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And I, I don't know about your experience, but it sounds like um, Carleton is a place you like felt like there was community and um, a way to connect with other students. And that was something you were looking for. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I definitely found found my community here, my home here. I, I just graduated and I stayed here in Ottawa. So this is, you know, it's really is my home now. Yeah. Great. Yeah, yeah. Um, was there a, a, you know, a favorite course that you took in the program? Definitely. Um, there have been a few courses that I, I really just absolutely loved. Um, one of which was actually uh, kind of a, a pair off with human rights and, and we'll hear about them in a second, but we did um, a children's rights course and I, I really loved that course. Um, it, I, you know, I, I never thought that I would be interested in policy. I wasn't a politics person or, or anything like that, but after taking that course and, and really learning about how some of our political decisions really impact children and, and can impact the way in which their their lives, like, like it follows them for the rest of their lives, I found that um, that was really amazing. And, uh, and another course that I really loved was again, like kind of outside of the, the child studies realm, it was a bit of a partnership with psychology. 
um, and it was developmental psych. Mm -hmm. And so I found that that was a really interesting um, program, kind of learning about how how children develop and what's going on in their brains, like throughout their lifespan. And and so those were definitely the the top two for me. Great. Yeah, thanks. Um, and were there any particular uh, like assignments you felt proud of or, um, you know, really were quite interesting for you? That you can remember. I know <laughs> it's hard to remember. Yeah. Um, so in that uh, that children's rights course that um, that I was saying, we we did a program or we did a um, a project about um, about like military life and um, so being like now a military wife. Uh, it, it was a really interesting topic for me because we we did this this project on kind of like what it's what it's like to move and, and and being a child who moves regularly and and kind of having that policy almost like thrown onto you uh, and that was really interesting because we got to pair up with some other people that we knew who grew up as military children and who were moving around and and we were able to do interviews with them and and then um, present our our project as well in in sort of a um, do like this big kind of presentation day and, and that was a that was a really interesting. Uh, project to be a part of because you know we, we got to talk to people and then we got to present it and it, it just it was really really cool yeah that sounds really cool yeah um is there like an experience during the program when you felt particularly proud of yourself hmm that's a <laughs> that's a good one um <laughs> Honestly, I don't know, like throughout the the entire time, there's like you always, you know, you're you'll be proud of yourself if you you maybe finish an assignment that you really didn't think was going to go well or, or things like that. I, I think for me, it was a lot more of the kind of little victories rather than maybe like one exact like huge moment where I was like, yeah, this was this was it. Aside from, of course, you know, graduating, that was a that was a big win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, are there any particular skills you felt like you developed uh, by being in the program? Definitely a huge writing skills were improved. Uh, not going to lie, I, I came into it pretty, pretty low uh, when, when I when I look back at myself now. Um, and and so, yeah, I definitely improved that. And um, and I was a I was a TA in my third and fourth year in the program. And so definitely having that experience of of having, you know, sort of teaching experience and learning how to effectively grade and, and effectively kind of work with someone to create assignments and and maybe uh, change them when, you know, COVID hit and, and how to uh, how to be adaptable was definitely something that I gained from this program. Yeah, yeah, that's a, I mean, that's a really uh, special opportunities to be a TA in undergrad. Yeah, yeah. Cool. And I think you're right, like everyone is learning how to be a better writer always. Uh, it's something even professors are up to. <laughs> um, and then, uh, you know, where do you hope to go with your degree? Or like, um, what do you think your degree has prepared you for if you're not sure where you're, you're headed next? Yeah, so I, um, I'm not sure if I mentioned this at the beginning, but I, I also was taking uh, some sign language classes. Cool. Um, and so I actually I did that as as my minor and so I'm kind of in the process of looking into applying to positions like at schools they have some like interpreter positions that like not an interpreter per se but kind of more like an EA who interprets and works individually with that student and that's sort of my goal of where I want to end up and, and kind of what I'm really working towards right now. Cool, that's really great. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of childhood and youth studies students get a minor in something, um, and I think there's a lot of minors out there that really complement the degree in a in a nice way at Carleton. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Yeah. Did you have any uh, friends at Carleton who were doing minors within the childhood and youth studies program? Yeah, I think um, honestly, probably every single one of my friends like got a minor in something uh the the program i found had a lot of room for electives which made it really easy to acquire a minor if you wanted um i actually ended up with two i did minors in both psychology and in sign language mm -hmm. uh, and i know lots of other people who did sign language or psych or maybe sociology or or even um like a human rights kind of uh like definitely a, a lot of a lot of us get get minors this is yeah definitely yeah. a good idea yeah 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 and um, 
Yeah, I mean, what was uh, it like working with profs in the program? Did you feel supported? Um, what, what, any, anything uh, that you can highlight from those uh, relationships or experiences? Absolutely, yeah. I, I really loved working um, with the profs. I found they were super helpful. Like, you know, I mean, I think we all kind of come into it thinking like, oh, it's going to be this huge class, and and the professor's not going to know who I am, and and they do. I mean, they they recognize you and. And they might not necessarily recognize your name to your face, but but they do recognize your face and they're always willing to to help when you need it. Like when I was um, TAing, I was uh, I was a TA for Alexandra. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, Mazitude, I, I always get that wrong uh, and I hope she's not listening, but uh, we we had a really great relationship and, and I really loved being a TA for her because she was always just you know, kind of what do you think would would help the class and, and just always there and and so you can absolutely always count on the the child studies profs to be there for you. That's great. That's great feedback. Um, and is there anything for if you're imagining someone, you know, uh, thinking about a program they might apply for, uh, why should they choose childhood and youth studies? I think it's really a program for for anyone who thinks that they want to do like literally anything in terms of working with children. Like if you do want to go in that teaching route, it's absolutely a great place to start. If you want to go like a social work route later, it's also a great place to start. Like literally any job that you could want to have if you see yourself working with children in the future, it's absolutely a great foundation to have, mm -hmm. in, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So uh, I feel like you mentioned this a bit, but you're going to apply for a grad program. Is that what I heard? I I, I might. Um, yeah. The There is a program that I'm looking at that is sort of that sign language specifically towards working with children um, yeah. at Gallaudet University. Um, and that's kind of like anyone who knows anything about sign language, like that's, that's kind of the place to be. Um, so I am looking into that. I'm not 100% sure, uh, but yeah. uh, it's 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 in the works, maybe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And do you feel like the program prepared you for for what's coming next? Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I I I feel kind of ready to jump into anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's fun. <laughs> yeah. Um. Any last tips you want to offer for someone who's considering Carleton or the Faculty of Arts and Social Science or Childhood News Studies? Just, just apply. Just come here, and you'll <laughs> you'll absolutely love it. I I guarantee it. <laughs> Great. Um, it was so fun chatting with you. Yeah, you too. And uh, thank you very much, uh, Julia, for that. And uh, that was a very interesting conversation as well, Vanessa. And um, I'm really glad that you highlighted the career aspirations because that's certainly what we hear from a lot of students is wanting to get into some of the careers that you talked about, and perhaps who you knows, maybe we need some grad studies as well. So uh, with that being said, we can pass it off to our next professor uh, who's joining us from the Human Rights Program is uh, Professor Rebecca. Welcome, Rebecca. Hi, Trevor. How are you? Good, thanks. Uh, so hi, I'm Rebecca Shine. I am a faculty in the Human Rights and Social Justice Program, and I'm really happy to get a chance to chat with Isha, uh, who's a student in the program. Uh, I miss all the students. I wish I could hang out with you in my office. Um, but this will have to do. So, Isha. Hello. Hi. Um, I apologize for my voice. I'm getting over a cold, so oh, no. my voice is nice and gravelly today. Well, at least not COVID, I hope. Well, I got tested, but it doesn't look like COVID, so <laughs> fingers crossed. Yeah. Um, so, uh, as with Julia, I think we'll start just by asking you what brought you to Carleton, what brought you to the Human Rights Program? So I have kind of a kind of a unique story for for coming to Carleton. My dad is actually my, my dad actually works at Carleton. Um, so I've grown up in Ottawa. Uh, I've basically grown up on campus. I spent um, a lot of time as a kid even on campus. My dad had this job like my entire life. So um, even as like a little like baby, I remember coming to campus with my parents and, and walking by the river um, or going for lunch in the calf or, or any of that. So um, it was, that was an interesting experience. So I always felt really connected to Carleton. Um, and so when the time came to choose a university, it kind of, it felt like a very obvious choice for my undergrad. Um, 
And then for human rights, um, I actually I actually didn't come to Carleton with human rights in mind. Um, I'm in the journalism program, so I um, Carleton has a very, very good journalism program. So that was one of the reasons I actually ended up picking Carleton. Um, but in if you're in the journalism program, you have to do another minor or major with your degree. Um, and so I ended up kind of exploring first year. I um, I took courses from a few different degrees, including like poli sci, neuroscience, because I felt like it, and then human rights. And um, from first year, it's the human rights program that really pulled me in and and really like captured my interest. And then I ended up picking that as my as my second major to go along with journalism. Well, that's really uh, that's a really common experience that I particularly uh, love as a teacher is having students who didn't have a plan who then, you know, come and take a course and get really, uh, really excited about what they're learning and then wind up in the degree. Um, your experience might be a little unique on this since you grew up on campus, but I wonder how you found the sort of Carleton community or your transition to being a student here and the human rights uh, student community particularly. Yeah, um, the human rights student community, I think in particular is like all, all of Carleton is so welcoming, so amazing, but I feel like the human rights degree in particular perhaps because of what we're what we're learning is particularly both open and accepting um, and at the same time willing to have an interesting conversation with you like um, it's filled with like these amazingly kind smart people who at the same time will not be afraid to, to debate with you on on really important topics and I feel like as a student that's so important for me at least I feel like I as an environment that's such a great environment to be in to feel safe enough to be able to talk about these really important topics that we're learning about in the human rights program. So I think for the program that we're studying, it's such a conducive environment uh, built by both the profs and and all the students uh, for learning this this type of thing. That's that's really nice to hear. Um, and certainly as a as a professor, you see that among the students, especially when I'm in fourth year classes, I'll see you know, students have been taking classes together for four years and they really they've got a good kind of vibe with each other. It's it's really like we enjoy that, too, as as teachers. Um, can you tell me something about either your favorite course or your favorite learning experience or your favorite assignment, things that have really stuck out for you uh, in your time in human rights? Yeah, I've had a few. I've had a few favorite courses uh, and I think that's because um, something that's really special about the human rights program is it's not just human rights courses. It actually encompasses courses from um, a, a lot of related degrees at Carleton. So um, I've taken courses in the in the women and gender studies department in the law department and the poli sci department um, and all just within my human rights degree. Um, I think one of my all time favorite courses that I've taken um, was called feminism, activism and human rights. And it was a particularly practical course. Um, it, we we did a lot of hands on learning in that course, which isn't something I was expecting out of a human rights course at all, because it's um, that's not what my other courses had been like. But what was really cool about that course is we had assignments like uh, we had an activism assignment where we had to go out and actively participate in some sort of activism event and then come back and write a reflection on it. And this was in um, this was in February of, of this of this year um, before COVID and all that happened. And so I I attended one of the protests in Ottawa for um, the Wasudan crisis and ended up writing about that. And both the protest was such a cool experience to, to actually be able to go and participate in something like that. And then for that to be an assignment was was especially amazing and there were so many other things we did in that course as well. We um, went to an art gallery to look at um, indigenous art that was on display in, in Carleton's own art gallery. Um, we had an assignment to go see um, an uh, Inuit play that was on um, by one of Ottawa's theatre companies um, and so it was a very practical course and I feel like I learned so much from it because I, I, I got to actually experience what human rights is trying to teach um, and so that in particular was a course that just stood out so much for me. 
Well, it sounds like that all that course also kind of put you in the Ottawa community a little bit too, right? The, the things that were going on culturally and politically uh, in Ottawa. Do you want to say a little more about what it's been like? I mean, I know you grew up here, but what it's been like, uh, what it's like to live in Ottawa as a student and the sort of connections like campus community connections that you might have experienced? Yeah, for sure. Um, human rights, I think, um, while we're learning about all these all these concepts and things that happen in human rights, uh, we have to look at the at the real world side of it as well. Um, and the real world side of it is the the activism, the um, intersectionality between different groups that are are trying to gain the rights that they deserve. And I think being in Ottawa is is such it's really a, a privilege in that um, Canada's capital sees a lot of this um, discourse about human rights having parliament here. I think a lot of big um, protests, a lot of big conversations um, around human rights take place right here in Ottawa. And and we have this amazing opportunity to to be able to physically participate in that because we're studying where we are. Mm -hmm. Um, you touched on this a little bit with, with regard to your favorite course, but can you tell us a little bit more about some of the skills uh, that you think that you've acquired or like challenges that you feel like you've met that you feel proud of coming out of your that you, that you know you'll take with you um, with your degree? Yeah, I think one of the biggest skills that the human rights department has taught me um, is not to just take everything at, at face value to to always be criticizing and and thinking for myself about every concept um, no matter what i learned in human rights no matter what i was taught i was never in my human rights degree has somebody told me this is right this is the only way to think and this is what you this is what you have to believe that's never been said in by any prof that I've had in, in the human rights program. Um, everything we've learned has been, we've come at it from this perspective of, of questioning it, criticizing it, asking is, is this really the best way to think about this topic? Um, and I think that's really, really important and a really important skill that I will carry even beyond this degree um, to be able to think critically about anything that's put in front of me and um, and not just take it as it is to always want to improve something um, or look at it from a different angle. Um, I think that's a really important skill to have. Right. And what can you, if you think back to your first year, what are the kind of things that that you found most surprising or most challenging? If you were sort of going to give yourself some advice for, uh, you know, joining joining Carleton or beginning an undergraduate degree, what would you what would you tell yourself? Um, I think I would tell myself to get involved as much as possible. Um, I know coming into university, it's it's pretty scary, and I was very much like, oh my god, grades, courses, I can only focus on this one thing. Um, and so I spent a lot of time being very much, and of course, focusing on your classes and your grades is important, but I, I spent a lot of time, especially in first year, in my own little bubble. And I think it's really important to create a uh, like to involve yourself within your university community, um, whether that be like trying to actually actively participate in courses and actually having discussions with people. <coughs> excuse me. Um, to be uh, joining clubs at Carleton and participating in different things that way. Um, or just trying to make friends with people in your courses. Uh, I think it's really important to to be involved and it's just it helps out. It helps out so much in the future as well. Um, if you make connections with people in your program right from first year, you have people to um, help you through the next three years as the program gets harder, right? You want that support. You want to know people in your program who are going through the same courses you're going through or are having the same experiences you're having. Um, and to have that support both in studying and also just having people who, who know what you're going through. Um, but also having making those connections with professors is really important as well um, because they're they're there to help you. Um, and if you don't 
step forward and, and make those connections with your professors, um, they won't know to give you a hand when you need it. So um, I think it's really, really, really important to to make connections with people in your program and, and as well as, as the Carleton community. Great. OK, one last question. I think you're pretty close to graduating. Do you I don't want to put you too much on the spot, but but what are your plans? What are you hoping to do next, do you think? Yeah, I'm, I'm still in third year, so I have I have about half of my degree, a little less than half of my degree left. Um, but my current plan uh, hopefully is law school. Um, I I know it's kind of I'm going from like journal, journalism and human rights to law, but um, my hope is to be able to practice law from some sort of human rights perspective, potentially something like immigration law or um, any law really that has to do with with human rights is is the goal um so yeah I'm, I'm i'm looking at 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 law school once i'm done this degree great all right it's been really nice to chat i think we're going to turn things over but uh hope you feel better soon thank you very much uh rebecca and nisha that was uh super well done very entertaining and some just want to pick up on something real quick that you talked about and this idea of uh that we talk about a lot isha is a uh, is a capital advantage and being in the epicenter of a national discourse or, or dialogue is something that's extremely unique to studying in Canada, especially for human rights and, and laws, as, as you mentioned. So uh, I'm glad you mentioned that, and I'm glad that that's working out well for you. Um, do you switch gears now? And we're going to uh, switch it over to the Women's and Gender Studies with uh, Professor Megan. Welcome, Megan. Hi, thanks very much for having me. This afternoon, um, my name is Megan Riversmore. I'm a professor in women's and gender studies at Carleton. Um, I just wanted to mention that our institute offers um, a major in women's and gender studies. We also offer a major in um, global genders and sexualities through the Bachelor in Global and International Studies. Um, and we also house, uh, so you can do a minor in women's and gender studies. You can also do a minor in sexuality studies, uh, in disability studies, and um, Fingers crossed that in the fall of 2021, we're hoping to launch a minor in critical race studies. So our institute um, houses all of those uh, different options for students. Um, I, I'm delighted to introduce one of our star students, Geneva. Um, they are a fourth year student in women's and gender studies and doing a minor in sexuality studies. Nice to see you, Geneva. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Um, so, okay, first question right off the bat. Why Carlton? Why did you choose us? Right. Good question right off the bat. Um, <laughs> I um, my dad actually came to Carlton um, and he I'm not exactly sure what he did. He doesn't really talk about his schooling that much. But uh, yeah, so he came to Carlton and he spent a lot of time in Dungeon Tower, which I find really ironic because I spend a lot of time in Dungeon <laughs> Tower now, too, which is where uh, the Institute is, our department. Um, but yeah, and it, I also have been living in Ottawa for, for most of my life and I still live in Ottawa right now. Uh, so it's nice to be able to drive 20 minutes, half an hour to get to campus. Um, that's <laughs> really convenient. Um, plus, what I really also liked was what uh, Carlton looked at, like what our, what the, our department looks at, because I was looking at other schools that have like women's studies and women's and gender studies and I don't know the way that Carlton had its its classes set up and like like for example like there was um I know on the the list that said it had classes in uh, girlhood and 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 um, masculinities but had classes um, that had more to do with like state and policy and um, uh, cross list classes that would talk about indigeneity as well or it would talk about human rights like uh, Isha was talking about earlier. And I just, I just really I, I liked it. Plus, like the the community that I was seeing even in high school, mm. it just it felt so like warm and welcoming. <laughs> I don't know. It was it was nice to to see the campus is also really beautiful, right beside the river. Oh my gosh, it's so gorgeous. <laughs> We're missing and, campus right now, aren't we? <laughs> uh, I I really miss the campus and seeing the groundhogs. There are groundhogs everywhere all the time. <laughs> <laughs> At least see once a week. Once a week. <laughs> <laughs> They're probably taken over now that we're not there. Say it again, sir. I said the groundhogs, the groundhogs have probably have taken, over taken over now that yeah. we're not. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> there are probably holes all over the ground. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, Geneva, can you talk about a bit about some of the common misconceptions about women's and gender studies? Because you talked a bit about how you like um, the, or you were really attracted to this sort of the, the interdisciplinary nature of what we do. And I don't know if everybody listening will know about that. So I wonder if you could talk a bit, you know, about some of the common misconceptions and then also maybe some of the ways that the program sort of surprised you or challenged you in some way. Absolutely. Yeah. Um... I think one of the most common misconceptions that I see in media is that like you can't really do anything when it's in gender studies degree. Um, it's kind of useless, and everyone just sits around and talking about talks about the the woes of women, and, <laughs> and then now you're in a bunch of debt, and then you work at a coffee shop. <laughs> that's the that's the general vibe that I get from shows mm. and stuff, or like um, it, like for example like. Um, uh, Supernatural, I used to watch that a lot. And then Dean one time, just like, one of the main characters just threw in like, hey, this isn't women's and gender studies, stop analyzing things and start shooting some demons. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, come on, why are you attacking me like that? <laughs> or like the whole department. Um, so yeah, I definitely can uh, address that. Like I don't, what we talk about is super, I mean, we're gonna talk about this later in another mm. question, but it's very, very applicable to life in so many different ways, in so many different ways. So, um, let me, let me structure this in my head here. Um, what we do is we like analyze um, and theorize about what's going on um, in our location. And if you decide to like look at like elsewhere around the world, you can do that as well. Like for example, uh, like what what you teach in uh, like <laughs> uh, sexual justice and and human rights uh, and the America study. Um, so like we we look at how the social and uh, the political and the legal structures um, can oppress or privilege certain bodies, certain people, and how to combat this and how to how to make activism and theorize around this and to, to liberate people. And it's like you, anyone can anyone can benefit from this. If you're going into law, and you want to know what who's being oppressed and who and um, who you can work towards to get into getting more like let's say for example like the black lives matter movement right now i'm having i get the i learn the tools to understand and dissect what's happening and i can understand why people are getting angry who's getting angry um what tactics are being used on many sides of course um and it's it's a beautiful thing it really is um Let's move on to something else, and let's say like indigenous studies. You, we, there's the thing about uh, uh, this program is that like half of it is like electives, so I can take classes and all over the board. I can take like psychology, anthropology, mm -hmm. sociology, obviously women's and gender studies, sexuality studies, uh, indigenous studies, and it counts towards it. So I can learn. I can take like ten courses in indigenous studies if I wanted to, <laughs> right. and I can learn about what's happening in Canada and like um, from what Isha was saying about the what's so wooden march and stuff like I went to it and I could I understood what was happening and understood how the government was imposing certain things and how the R, the RCMP like uh, I had a class with uh, uh, Professor Gentile about state gender and sex and how the state regulates gender and sex but also race but that would have been too long of a title. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, we could understand how the RCP has been having, uh, has had a very long history of surveillance and stuff. And it's very, it's very interesting. It's very interesting. Absolutely. I, you, I mean, you jumped ahead and answered my next question about, about how the program applies to life in the world. But yeah, I mean, I think, I think what you're getting at is really important about that, that, you know, one of the things we do is really give students um, the tools to help analyze, right? Like Absolutely. the world that we live in, what's happening at the moment. And I think one of the real strengths of women's and gender studies is exactly what you've pointed to, that interdisciplinarity, right? So we have um, professors who uh, you know, have degrees in sociology and geography and history and uh, political science, right? And so it's like we're getting at these questions um, about, uh, you know, inequalities in the world, about oppression, about privilege from from a variety of different perspectives, right? So um, yeah, I think that's I think that's a huge strength of um, of what we're doing. Um, can you, so you just mentioned one course, can you talk about, can, I know it's hard to choose, um, but do you have a favorite course or a, a favorite um, experience uh, from your degree that you could tell us about? 
Right. Um, well, that course was actually one of my favorite courses. It was every week I was learning new stuff and my mind was absolutely blown. <laughs> <laughs> Finding out about like what the, the, the government has done uh, in surveillance, because it was mostly talking about surveillance. It was mm -hmm. just, it was so interesting. It, I didn't even know. <laughs> it was, okay, so that class, along with uh, decolonizing gender and sexuality, mm -hmm. that was an Indigenous studies class, actually. That one was really, really good. And a lot, I learned a lot about uh, history and um, like colonization, what has happened over the past couple of hundred years and what is still happening and what will continue to happen, unfortunately. And that's just, but what we're doing here and through Indigenous studies, through women's and gender studies, is trying to work and, and strategize, strategize, sorry, on what to do now. And like, I mean, there's already been a history of scholars and authors who are, have been doing that. And it's, 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 a, it's, it's amazing to, to know that um, people like me and people in my situation are like the next, like in my program and other programs similar, are the next ones that are going to be like entering this arena. It's really, really cool. But um, I do want to emphasize that not just because I'm in women's and gender studies, that doesn't mean I have to go into academia or like I don't have to sit with all the big wigs and start <laughs> rising and everything. <laughs> so where do you hope your degree takes you? What are you, I mean, no, no pressure, but what are you planning to do with this degree? What are the next steps? So yeah, I mean, academia absolutely is one option, but it's not the only one. So where else might this degree take you? Right. I actually don't know what I want to do. I have flirted with a bunch of different ideas. Um, I know it can take me to a lot of different places. Like uh, I've already had like three job opportunities. Like um, it's like I could, I could be a professor. I could do a bunch of independent research. I could go into law and legislation. I could go into being a lawyer, a policymaker. I could go into the UN. I could go on like um, equity boards and I could go <laughs> all over the place. I really could. Um, but uh, I know I want to take some time and really consider my options to make sure I make the best choice. Because of course, with anything that you do, you need to take into consideration like where you're going to live. Um, are you going to like relocate? Uh, if you're like planning on having a family, like <laughs> there's a lot of things that need to go into any any decision that needs to be made. So I'm not exactly sure what I want to do, but I do know that um, I really have a passion for critical race theory and talking about race and racism and racialization um, and uh, and state surveillance and control and how people regulate each other socially um, that's, and decolonization. Like that's really those are my interests. Amazing. And I mean, all those things, all those options, it's, it's wonderful to hear that you feel like you're coming out of this program with, you know, uh, all of those options open to you. And we just absolutely have students who have gone on to, you know, many of those things that you mentioned, like law and teaching and social work, but also non-governmental mm -hmm. organizations, policy. Yeah, all of those, um, you know, are areas we've seen our students um, thrive. And so I'm wondering, what are some of the key skills that you've developed through this degree that you think you'll be able to take out, you know, no matter where you end up, what some of the key skills are? Right. So uh, analyzing, I would say, mm. is the, the biggest, the biggest skills. So like if I, if I watch a movie, I can, <laughs> <laughs> like, for example, I don't know, something that people generally do, <laughs> watch a movie, or I can, look through it and see the injustice and I'm like all right well I can strategize and see like if this person talked to this person or if, um this is the thing that's bringing them down and maybe this is the reason why this character isn't talking in the situation because they're uncomfortable and they're afraid of this happening and stuff like that so <laughs> analyzing is uh, is a really big one also um I mean the way I talk and the way I write is not exactly the same but <laughs> Writing skills are a, ma a major part of it because there's a lot yeah. of essay writing in this. Um, and essay writing, of course, comes from research. Research mm -hmm. is an important thing. And I don't think that high school really prepares people enough um, to really know how to research. Um, I also really appreciate that in universities that you have so much available to, available for, to you to be able to research. Mm. Like, so many resources that you can, that you can um, explore 
Well, that's great. Um, can you, this is the last one, Geneva. What is so far, I know you're not finished your degree, Yes. but what have you been the most proud of? What are you proudest of um, so far? Right, I, last, last year I was awarded the Ruth Bell Centennial Scholarship, um, which is awarded $5,000. <laughs> So I was really proud when I got that. I got it <laughs> um, in March, and yeah, so that that really helped me out because money is not exciting. Not <laughs> money is not the the. We don't have a lot of money, so it's nice to to know that your school can offer you so much money, or like uh, uh, um, organizations and affiliations with the school can offer you so much money to continue your research. That was really that was really. I was very humbled by that. <laughs> well, you got that award because you're an outstanding student in our program, right? <laughs> yeah, I did earn it. <laughs> I tried Absolutely. really Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I also got uh, offered twice to be a part of a program where you, a student helps a, a university professor make a course. So I helped uh, Dr. Katie Bush make the introduction for Women's and Gender Studies, the introductory course. Um, and then right now, and we're in the works of making a masculinity studies. So I took a, a masculinity in pop culture class with her. Yeah. But like now, this is the first time she'll be teaching a masculinity studies, like just masculinity studies. Um, so we're doing that together right now. And I'm also, I got offered a research position with Dr. Um, Patricia, Patricia Gentile. <laughs> and uh, so yeah, we're doing that together along with two master students and one other undergrad. So what's it been like for you to work closely with these various professors? I mean, one thing is taking classes and another is these opportunities that you've had to actually yeah, develop, uh, you know, syllabi with one professor or research project with another. Is that something like, does that change your experience of the program or of the department? Is, would you recommend that other students, you know, follow in your footsteps in that? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> it's really, it's really cool to be able to work with a professor and see how human they are like yeah. <laughs> i don't know there's like this this weird i don't maybe not weird but this bond that people have students have with, with the university professors versus high school uh, um, teachers mm -hmm. and there is like a scary element to going into university and depending on what program you have you might have a class with 300 people or you might have a class with 30 people you know and if as if you keep going up and up in your um, in your years, the class sizes get smaller, and you start getting closer with your professors. Um, so like now, I, I can text my professor <laughs> at any time of the day, <laughs> which is absolutely. She wished me a happy birthday the other day, and I was like, "Thank you, Katie. It was amazing. <laughs> like, <laughs> basis. This is amazing." <laughs> and I can ask her questions about the world, and she has the answers. And I'm like, "Thank you." It's like this like a, a mentorship thing that's going on here. It's preparing me for adulthood. <laughs> like, well, that's so nice. And that's one of the nice things about, yeah, I mean, you move from the first year class that has, yeah, hundreds of students in it. And then as you move up, the classes get smaller. Yeah, and that, that possibility to develop um, relationships over the whole degree with professors. And then, you know, that's really nice for us too, to watch, you know, yeah. as you move through the, uh, through the program and, you know, how your thinking changes and how your writing changes. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's such a nice part of, of what we do. Even if it's a giant class like that, I remember having her in, her, in her introductory class, there was a, about a hundred people in that one. And I still became like really close friends with her because I talked to her after class and she's a very nice and welcoming pe person, sorry. I mean, I'm not gonna speak for every professor. <laughs> some professors are crabby, some you know, high school teachers are crabby, that's just how it is. But a, lo a lot of professors are very welcoming and they're like, please come to my office hours, I'm bored anyway. <laughs> come say hello, let's talk about the course, let's talk about your life, it doesn't even matter. It's very, it's very welcoming, very nice. That's great. Uh, well, I'm out of questions, Geneva. Thank you so much. So interesting to hear your your insights on on our program and on your experiences in it. Thank you for having me. It was a, <laughs> nice to be here. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Megan and Geneva. That was uh, really it was really an interesting conversation to to sit and watch you guys uh, you know rap about the program and your experiences. It's pretty cool. And uh, congratulations to you on the Ruth Bell Award. That's, uh, that's a great achievement, good for you. And uh, just one point that resonated with me, I'm an arts and social sciences grad as well. And the one thing that I just wanted to pick up on was, was the interdisciplinarity 
uh, point that you guys had made as part of the uh, uh, your presentation here and and just how, how spot on that is. And I know as a first year student um, having ac ac so access to so many um, so many programs to choose from and you have such a um, a wide array and arsenal of uh, of courses to pick uh, going forward from from year one and sampling and going back. I think it's a huge, huge point for students that are choo choosing the arts and social sciences. And uh, certainly um, I was really happy that you that you made that point. So thank you. Thank you once again. Um, I, I think that was another great, fantastic spotlight session today. And uh, there was so much sort of interesting insight into these amazing specialties in our Carleton community. Um, I want to say, um, you know, special thanks to our guest professors for joining us today and especially our amazing star Carlton students who shared their time on their fall reading week um, I, I, to note there. So, you know, that's uh, some big commitment right there to, to step up on the on the reading week and join us. So we really appreciate it. And mostly to all the students watching at home, we had a, we had a really huge turnout today, which was, was really cool. Um, please feel free to hang around here for a while and take full advantage of the uh, Q&A function. Uh, there's been some great questions going on in the back end there in the Q&A. Uh, we'll leave it open for another 10 minutes or so. If you want to hang around and talk to some other people, get to your questions answered, we'd be happy to do that. Um, also, remember if you're unsure about your choices so far, and uh, there's, a, as I mentioned, the interdisciplinarity of, of the Arts and Social Sciences program. Uh, we are going to be profiling different majors uh, week over week, and uh, feel free to tune again, tune in again next Friday at 4 p.m. when we profile English, history, and the humanities. So thanks again uh, to everyone who joined us, and have a great weekend. Be safe. <laughs>